In the last episode, we discussed the IPA2X autonomous robot that stops cars as they approach crossings so people can cross safely. Škoda Auto also took part in the project financed by the European Union. The car maker developed a special mask for the Enyaq IV with an HMI interface. Rather than its standard crystal face, this prototype Enyaq has an LED screen that can for example show pedestrians that they may cross safely. And in today's Simply Clever podcast, one of the things we'll be focusing on is how similar communication between the car and the environment might work and why the current legislation doesn't allow it. Okay, so right now we're not on the street, we're in the garage, uh, but we're gonna have some uh, kind of simulation how this HMI works. So in this theoretical scenario, the car is approaching to the crossing and what happens now? It happens uh, this thing, the vehicle knows about the pedestrians, for example, from uh, car to vehicle system communication or from the sensors. It uh, shows a signal to pedestrians that they can uh, cross the crossing. Of course, the vehicle stop, safely stop. Yeah, and that, that's uh, the green lights, green arrows and uh, the green man walking. Yes, yes, yes. yes that's, that's quite understandable signal, of course. Yes, and uh, when uh, the pedestrians uh, finish the crossing or vehicle needs to drive again, it will switch the signal from go to warning. Yes, the pedestrian red, red shouldn't go go again, and vehicle simply drive drive out. Red triangles with exclamation mark, yes. flashing in red. Yes. In red. Flashing and red triangles. Yes, should be understandable. First idea was to uh, find the position where to show the signals, some signals for the pedestrians because uh, the vehicles becomes to be piloted and uh, most people are looking for a driver to have uh, eye contact with, with the driver if he will stop or continue with driving. So the first one was the last trip on the top uh, of the windshield, but uh, this is too small uh, to be visible from the long distances and uh, people still were searching for the driver. So we decide to use this big mask when we uh, expect and uh, the confirm we have it confirmed that uh, people looks uh, on this mask uh, primary. Yeah, it's quite a huge piece of, of material, so it's uh, pretty much visible. As, as you mentioned that people uh, were not reacting on this, this small stripe, so you kind of tested it uh, uh, on real people. Yes, we have tested it uh, with real people on Skoda Polygon. We have uh, eye tracking glasses, which uh, tracks your uh, sight and time uh, of the focus, your focus. And we measured that, as I said, uh, the LED strip uh, are not uh, too, too much visible. So the focus on them is very, very low. And the much bigger focus was on this LED mask from, of course, from far distances. And that uh, when the vehicle comes uh, close enough, you still can see the big mask, of course, and then uh, you can see also the LED strip. But vehicle is close. Yeah. Uh, in the future, uh, the car might communicate not only to the pedestrians on the crossing, like, okay, you can go or you, you should stop because I want to uh, follow driving or continue driving, but it might display also different kind of information. Yes, of course, it could. Uh, it's not only for communication with uh, pedestrians, for example, with other drivers and with all participants on the road. So, yes, you're right. You uh, can be show anything, for example, when the vehicle receives some information from uh, city infrastructure, for example, or from another cars. It could be also shown as a sign on the car. And not only on the mask, but there might be some other HMIs? For the driver, we have the internal HMI, and for the other people, we have the external one. So yes, it could be shown to the driver, of course, on the big displays inside the car. And this is why we've invited representative from the design department to the Simply Clever podcast. Martin Patzelt, the designer of exterior lighting. 
can we maybe start what was your task on this prototype mask? What did you design on that? Now, first, I would like to mention that we jumped into the project in quite a later stage of the project. So we had uh, basically no chance to influence the shape of the uh, of the element and the size and the position. And our task was to create some alternative proposal uh, because we saw the first presentation. Uh, the hardware was done at that time and there was one so initial graphic or animation and our task was to, to prepare some kind of alternatives for uh, many driving, let's say, conditions and... Yeah, generally speaking, to design like what uh, this notification will look like and uh, to find a way to be as understandable as possible. Yes, yes. This is, I think this is, this is the main topic, to have it very understandable for, for everyone in, let's say, every country. And the task was to find uh, the best theme, which is... Uh, understandable and very intuitive. And when we say intuitive, it has to be kind of like simple message that when, when I see it, because when I'm on the, uh, on the crossing, I don't have too much time to, to think about like what the car uh, is trying to tell me. So it has to be simple. Probably uh, you work with colors here also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. <clears throat> Basically for us was the important thing to um, find the right say symbol or uh, right animation, how to tell to the pedestrians that the car knows about them, uh, the car can stop uh, safely in front of the crossing or it cannot stop, They know uh, the car knows about the pedestrians but the car cannot stop in, uh, in, you know, in the time, so it can happen some kind of collision. Uh, that's why we're also thinking about the colors uh, for this kind of you know, situation when the car cannot stop. We are thinking about some kind of red warning colors, uh, also about the speed of the animation to have it really you know, uh, like eye-catching stuff placed on the car. And when the car knows about you and uh, about, about the other pedestrians, uh, it should be more calm, uh, more, let's say, s the animation slower. Also, we're thinking about some kind of green colors or maybe some kind of uh, turkish colors or something like that, which is more, let's say, like, like harmonious or, or let's say, normal for um, kind of information. Yeah. You have to have some kind of like color scale from like warning color to let's say nothing is happening color yeah, yeah. basically this was <clears throat> this was one of the of the of the task of 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 the of our thinking what kind of color it should have and um, yeah i think it will be somehow mentioned by the some law which will which will come in the future because definitely it must be regulated by some by some law because currently there are law uh, which is saying us what kind of color can be in the front of the car what kind of colors can be uh, happening on the on the rear of the car and with this autonomous driving i think that they will come more colors in the game and uh, we will see what the future will bring us i know this is just a prototype so even the message will uh, probably change if if something like that will get uh, to the serial production but uh, i was thinking if it's necessary to have an animation uh, on the screen uh, because like here there are two scenarios the green one uh, that you can go message is a green man walking and some some arrows flashing on the screen uh, the warning sign is uh, just just this pictogram let's say uh, flashing in red color uh, so which is better from your point of view because for me it probably don't have to be this kind of like movement like a little story <laughs> on, on the screen um yeah <laughs> how to say that for us as a designers i think it's always better to have it like more mm, sophisticated so instead of just simple uh, symbol or pictogram it's always better to have at least some kind of movement because we can use it for, for example as, as an advantage so we can uh, even say that we know about you about you as a pedestrian and you can go for example your way so if you are standing on the right side of the of the of the crossing that the the, the arrow can 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 show run you from, the way yeah, exactly something like that to have it a little bit more understandable for uh, for the people uh, as you mentioned you did not work on the let's say uh, overall design of of this uh, prototype mask uh, and it probably won't look like that uh, in the future so what is your uh, let's say idea about that like what 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 it should like should look like especially on this car on this project uh, it was quite a logical step 
from the development to use the, the era of the of the of the mask. Uh, we have it in the serial production uh, as a crystal face, which is already some kind of uh, communication thing. Uh, it, 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 it's greeting you when you are coming home. It's a greeting when you are leaving, and so on. Uh, it can be programmable already now, but it has not such a functionality like like this prototype. And um, yeah. Our expectation is that the, the, the future bring, be, will bring us uh, some kind of um, necessity to use some area in the front of the car for such a communicating, let's say, panels or lighting panels. And um, yeah, we were already thinking in the past where it should be, how it should look like. We were thinking about the front part, we were thinking about the A pillars, about the area of the, of the greenhouse and so on. And, um, yeah, uh, what we presented already on our latest uh, show car, uh, Škoda Vision 7S, it was the feature which call, we, we call it Tech Deck. And the purpose of this thing is to integrate the, the necessary functionality like, like a sensors. And we think that maybe it will be the part for the communication in the future as well. So it will be some kind of, of, of band of stripe in the front of the car, which will communicate with the pedestrian. Yeah, on the Vision 7, it's just just a small strap, which is kind of like showing different colors, pulsating and so on. Uh, for me, it's a little bit different, you know, because like on, on the Vision 7, it's just a strap here. It's quite a huge piece of material. So I guess it will meet somewhere in between. This can happen. I think also this will be uh, set by the by the law, by the legislative in the future, how the panel should look like, how big it will be and where should be positioned in, in the front of a car. And uh, I'm pretty much sure that this one will come once and it will influence the, the front and the whole appearance of the of the front of the car. So the cars will look a little bit different than we know them now in the current days. Here it's uh, really uh, visible. You know, it's a, it's a white piece of uh, piece of screen on, on black background. But I guess uh, in the future, it doesn't have to be that like, obvious, you know, that uh, it might be kind of hidden on, on the front of the car. It, maybe not, not so like, okay, this is a screen, you should look, uh, you should look there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, hope, I hope it will be not like that, but uh, it has to give the information to, to the surroundings. And uh, if you are like, planning or I would like to, to, to somehow express the, the, the information what the car will or is, is, is um, somehow going to do in a, in a few next seconds and um, yeah, it must be visible and I think that it will be somehow maybe somewhere between what we presented already or somewhere between what we see here now. But still the safety goes first in this, in this yeah, case. I think so. Yes. This will be really said by the, by the legislation, by, by the law. Yeah, and as, as you talk about the legislation, there might be some standard of like what, what size it should be, where should it be placed, because it doesn't have to be like the front mask, the grill. It might be, I don't know, the lower part or whatever. Uh, we will see, we will see. I don't know how it will be because, you know, still uh, many of our competitors are also searching in this, uh, uh, trying to explore this field because it's quite, quite new, but uh, I have to say that yeah, it, it will come once. One, it will come because everyone is working on it. So we will see. I hope that we will be more free, you know, in terms of where it will be positioned, how it will look like, how big and so on. But currently, I, I cannot, I cannot tell you more. Not to have so many limitations for the design. I hope so. <laughs>
properly yeah. because they want to define exactly which symbols are universal, which are understandable for people all around the world because light is safety feature, feature on the car. That's their regulatory point of view. We have slightly different point of view also <laughs> because we know how important is styling design of it and uh, optical performance of, of the features. That's not in conflict, but we have to wait for the serial deployment of such technology on, on the regulation framework. And, and the biggest problem right now is that uh, the car can, let's say, sh I don't know, uh, shine or let's say show some signs where it's not regular right now. Yes, because it's not defined, then it's prohibited to a certain extent. And uh, also the hardware itself is, is not uh, prepared for the serial uh, production from terms of pedestrian production, from terms of uh, banal, banal images. And, uh, but main, main issues are the colors, they are not defined. There is plan to, to have um, cyan color for the autonomous driving, but not being uh, approved on the regulatory level. Therefore, we also can use such samples to influence or to show to the regulatory bodies how it, would, it could look like and what they like, dislike, and slightly point the, the regulatory way in our, our favor, yeah. in, in the proper direction. Yes, because the, the uh, current crystal face uh, on regular ENIAC already can sh uh, light, like they use, use some kind of like uh, white signal. So the biggest problem right now is that this is basically showing some red Colors. signs, which is, which is again, not... <laughs> it's illegal. Not. The, the, the red light in, in front is prohibited as, as well the uh, white light to the back of this car with the exception of the backup lighting, of course. But at the moment it's, it's uh, really mm, difficult to predict what, what and when the regulatory uh, framework will enable us to, to, to work and to put it on the cars. And uh, as we mentioned, it's all about safety because we have to be sure that everybody understands the signals uh, that uh, they don't get confused because they see red light, they think it's a rear part of the vehicle and so on. That's yeah. right. And uh, for us at the moment, not only the optical design, also the styling, the day design, not only the lit, how it looks like at night, but al also the day design is, is very important for our colleagues from styling department and to confuse all these requirements together, that will be a long way for us. <laughs>